Hey guys, this is Mike the Wrestling Godsmith, and you guys are watching on wrestling. Um, you know, this video is actually for my AEW's predictions for Revol my AEW Revolution's predictions. Um, here's the thing I'm gonna say. Um, the first thing, the first match I'm gonna go into is the pre-show stuff because, like, it's pre-show, zero hour. I don't mind the star-studded battle royale thing with Chris Jericho because it was cool. Um, I think he's gonna come out on top because he always does. He, he's not gonna, he's not gonna either. He's gonna end up doing something, or he's probably gonna go after. He, he's gonna go after somebody. I just feel like it's gonna happen. Um, the second match I want to get into, which is the Orange Cassidy Roderick Strong match for the AEW International Championship, and my thoughts are kind of either way. Because this feud is fun, but it's like a mid card, mid level feud. I mean, I want Roger. I do want Undisputed Kingdom holding all the gold. I just don't want it to be a situation where you have like two dudes having titles, except for like Wardlow, because he's kind of the only guy. Because Adam Cole is hurt, and yeah, he's hurt. Samoa Joe is pretty much champion, and at some point, Warlow will be world heavyweight, like, AW world champion. It's just, it, it just like, they got to do something with them. Because they're making them look strong, but they're booking them like they're a bunch of chumps. And those ROH belts, the tag belts haven't even been defended by Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, the kingdom. They haven't even been defended by those dudes, like. Like, I'm going I'm to be straight. That's my feeling. Because they haven't really defended them. And honestly, I really feel like them having the ROH titles just makes them relevant. But that's about it. And I'm just hoping, even if they do, if they pull the trigger on Roger Strong being champion. Because they want him to be an international champion. Because this is what this rivalry has been about. It's just been all... Oh, like, and this is the thing. Orange Cash is going to end up winning that title. I, I feel like he's going to win somehow. But the only way Roderick Strong wins is if, if it's a strength, if it's a, if it's a screwball finish where it's like a controversial finish where to the point where he doesn't do, he wins clean, but somebody gets involved. Like, that's my feeling of it. Because if he does win, it's going to be weird for Wednesday because it's going to be like, well, he's not really doing much. I mean, like, there is a possibility that, like, if, like, they get rid of Orange Cassidy, they, Bang Bang Scissor Gang is not really doing jack. Like, I really want them to win the trios belt, so, like, because that was the whole thing about them, like, you know, the acclaimed and Book Club Gold having six-man tag trios belts, because they could have unified them, and I feel like the Undisputed Kingdom could do that, because there are three dudes it's like ward coke can be a six-man champion he has a belt he'll have the world title or he'll go after the tbs title i mean T not tbs um tnt title then the world title because i feel like he feel like i feel like he had a better reign as tnt champion because world title reigns in, in aw and i'm gonna say this guys like kind of like wwe's world title reigns it's like they do great with it but only if the rivalry is great. Because the joke is Wardlow's tired of getting scraps, and I get what he said on Wednesday, but it's like, I mean, last Wednesday, because it's like, you know, he's great, but without like it's like without without him having a like a, a good storyline and like really banger matches, it's like uh he's kinda uh, you know he's kinda gone, man, you know. And that's what it feels like. It feels like he could be that guy. But it's like, bro, it's like if Hangman becomes champion, him and Swerve go at it another, they go at it a double or nothing, he becomes AEW champion, or he just wins the Battle Royale, gets a shot at the title, crashes in the same night. That's what I would do. Or Wardlow wins the title, he come, like he wins in like double. I think they should do that double or nothing because... He needs that shot. He kind of needs something to, to bring himself to the table. And if he becomes world champion while Adam Cole is healed, 
They get their thing. Adam Cole comes back. He's healed. He's ready to go. They don't really fight. They all hug it out. Whatever they decide to do, he goes back to being TNT title guy or whatever. Or he'll, or he could be Continental Champion because I forgot that's that's a title too. Yeah, I do that. I give him a Continental title run. Sorry guys, I, I got off topic with that, but um. Like I said, it's the Orange Cassidy match go either way. I'm excited about it because I don't know who's gonna win. Because I just want to, I just want to see Orange Cassidy just just do what he does best. Same thing with Roderick Strong. Um, I do want to talk about the FTR versus the the BBC match because I, I I know it's gonna be fun. I know that's probably gonna be sick. I think FTR are gonna beat. They're really gonna beat the shit out of um the Blackpool Combat Club. Like they're gonna beat the shit out of them. Sorry for my language, but they, they're going to do it. Like, they're going to beat the crap out of them really bad. Because Blackpool Combat Club, they, they relish on a fight. So you you got Claudio Castanoli. He's, FTR is going to win that match. That I'm 100% sure about. Because those dudes are the best tag team in the fucking world. Like, they won, they won every belt. In every company. They won NXT. Like, bro, they're former WWE NXT champions. Former Ring of Honor champs. Former IWGP tag champions. And former AEW champions. Bro, they're going to win. They're going over. They are going to be the top guys for a while. Blackpool Combat Club, I love those guys. But they got to do something with them. They got to get They got to get Yuta. They got to get more people. They got to get Hook. Because I feel like Hook being around Orange Cassidy works for him. But then I'm just like, yo, they kind of need to push something with him. And I, if they do push the world title shot, I wouldn't do it right then and there. Or give him something against Christian. Something where he can actually come on top. Because I can see him being a TNT champion. The WWE belt, he hasn't really defended it. And technically... I mean, realistically, he could fend it against Willie Uta, but Willie Uta's not going to want another rivalry with him unless he goes after him. But I doubt that. And I don't know if he's going to go after the Shibata for the Pure Championship. Even if he goes after him for the Pure, the Pure Championship is just, it's just nothing. It's just being a pure wrestler, which I don't mind, but that's neither here nor there. But um, that I'm certain on. The next match I'm actually certain that I'm not 100% certain on is the, the TNT title match. Because here's the thing, you got Daniel Garcia, and I'm, and I'm, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in depth, and I apologize if this is a long video, but here's the thing, Daniel Garcia is going to, he's going to get close, he's going to get close, he's not going to win it, because Christian's going to do some shenanigans, Nick Wayne's going to get involved, or Luger Source, I mean, Killswitch is going to get involved, and here's the thing about Daniel Garcia, bro, I love the guy, I really do, I love him. I love what he's doing. I love that he's got this, 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 this unbelievable charisma. And I'm like, bro, give him something. And this is something they gave him. And he, he's been doing fantastic since the C2, since the Continental Classic. And I'm like, bro, he's doing great. And they need to keep that on. Like, bro, if he wins the TNT title, it's like, bro, it works. Maybe he can't, like, even if he can't get it, maybe he can get the, interna the international championship. I I want to see that. I want to see some type of gold on this dude. Or maybe he'll go to pure champion again. Because this version of Daniel Garcia where he's getting winning is amazing. Because, like, don't get me wrong, guys. Like, I like Daniel Garcia. I love the guy, right? I love the guy. And here's my thought on this, right? Is that I want this guy to go over. Like, he is an upper mid-card dude. Like, him being the way he is and him and, and, and Daddy Magic working out what they're doing and it works for them. And it, if he comes in and he does some, he does some jit, I'm sorry, when he comes and he does something with him, it's crazy. Because, bro, it's like even with the rivalry with Christian and Nick Wayne and, 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 and the patriarchy, like he could be that guy. He could be that dude. And I feel like he could. I feel like he could be that guy. Come in. Give a bombshell of a match. Absolute bomber of a match. 
and kill it. And just be like, yo, I came close. I did what I needed. Here we go. That's that's my feeling of it. Like, that's my gut feeling of, oh, he can be that guy. He can be that level guy. He can go that level. Because to me, that actually works. So, I'm going to say Daniel Garcia is going to come out close. He's going to come out close. That's my feeling of it. He's going to come out close. He's gonna. He's not going to get the title. I mean, this could be the stepping stone for him being continental champion or just being international. That's my feeling on it. I'm going to go with Daniel Garcia on this one because I love the guy. I'm glad he's out the JS. I'm glad that he's doing his own thing without... Um, Jake, and I'm glad they're doing something with him a little bit. Like, yo, this I think this might be my match of the night. But the next match I want to talk about is the AEW Women's title match. Timeless Tony Storm against Deanna Perrazzo. And is the I love this rivalry. I love the story that they've been playing with Timeless Tony Storm. I love the gimmick. I love that she's a like she sounds like a 1950s film the water star who's going who basically like becomes deranged i feel like i feel like it works for her i feel like they they're gonna do something because diana perrazzo love what she's doing love, love the virtual so i know how good she is i've seen what she can do it's amazing i like that she's doing it because here's the thing diana perrazzo is like them doing the two the two different like the two different entrances side by side and it, it's just bro it, it's like two women one destiny that's the difference and i like the feeling of it because it's like yo we got this storyline which is really good because I, lo I love tony Stone. i do love her i love what they do with her i love what they do with luther because luther makes luther just makes it more entertaining for me if he didn't, if she didn't have Luther, I'd be, I'd be like, all right, cool. Another Laurel Van Ness thing. But I love, I love the Van Ness stuff. I do. I love the Van Ness stuff. I love, I mean, sorry. I love the Timeless Tony Storm stuff. I love the Luther stuff because I like that Luther's there. I like that Luther is there. That's what I like about it. I like what they're doing with Luther. I like that he's just there. He's the butler. But he doesn't mind being the butler. I like it. I like Luther. Because Luther's cool. I like Luther. He's, he's there. I like Luther being there. And here's the thing. If we get some more CML stuff, I'm perfectly happy with that. See, I just want to see if we're going to get a part. I just want to know if Tony Khan is going to do the thing where he does it. Because every re revolution, we've always had a sign-in. At Revolution, and I feel like we're gonna have one. That's my gut feeling on the on the on with the main event. If we do, there's one guy I already know who's coming, and I know the, the dude. That's the Celtic Warrior, bro. He he's there. He's there. He's in AEW. I think he's coming to Revolution, and if he does, it's gonna shake up the game. He's gonna. I wonder what his, I wonder what his real name is though. I wonder if he's going to go with his real name. I wonder. I wonder how it's going to be, and it's going to be fucking amazing. But anyway, but like I said, it, dude, like, and now that I want to talk about the main event, because brother, two main events, actually, I want to talk about the Bucks versus Sting and Darby in the Tornado Tag Match. That, this match is going to be good. It's, it's Sting's final match. It's going to be a bomb. The Young Bucks are winning those titles. The reason I say this because here's the thing. We've never got heel young bucks. We've gotten face. We've gotten the elite version of them. But we've never got corporate side. Corporate young bucks. We never got the young bucks that we're seeing on Dynamite right now. Because they're loving the heel run. And I'm liking it too. Because I'm liking that they're just coming out with their real names. They're coming out with the, not the, you know, 
Super Kick Party. The theme's a little bit more darker. It's a little bit more professional. They're coming out with bats and suits. They're still doing the B, the B, the EPP trigger, which I like the name. And they're still doing what they want to do. See, and then I'm thinking to myself, right, if Kenny comes back, Kenny coming back and joining them would make so much sense. Because then they're all heels. He becomes a champion again. It works. I like heel Kenny Omega. When he's heel Kenny Omega, it makes sense. Heel Kenny Omega makes sense because it's like, okay, I've been gone. I've seen what you guys have been doing. I've been gone. I've been gone for a while, but I like what we're doing here. See, and that's what I'm thinking with the with the world title situation because I feel like there's going to be two things. Kenny could come back. Sheamus could come. They'll do their thing. But I'll talk about that a little bit as I go into the into the, the world title thing. But no. But like I said, the Bucks being over Sting and Darby, the Bucks are winning this one. They got to. They they got to win. Because if he doesn't retire, then there's a story. There's a bigger storyline. Because I think Tony, that's what Tony wants to do. Because I think if they win, then him and Darby can kind of, they can still do their thing. Darby can like, yo, Sting, I love, dude, I love what you're doing. Like, we're, we're best friends. We've been doing this for a while. And I want to see, I want to see Christian beat by Sting for the TFT title. Or Darby to beat him again. But, no. But... I think them going with the Young Bucks this probably works for them because they, they they're gonna they're gonna want to beat the shit out of Sting every week, which actually makes sense because it's bringing them it's it's working. So I think I'm gonna go with the Young Bucks, the Corporate Bucks on this one. I'm gonna go with them winning the tag titles so they can continue the story. Um, the World Title match I'm gonna talk into I'm gonna get into the World Title match and I apologize if this is a long video. Because I got to, you know, get my thoughts out as a wrestling YouTuber about my knowledge. So, like I said, guys, here's, here's my thought on this one. Because here's the thing. I like the odds with Hangman. And we got the world, the AEW World Championship triple threat. And Samoa Joe's going in. The dude's over. He wants to be him and, and, and him and Swerve. Hangman and Swerve. I, I think it could either be. It could be if Joe retains perfect. Because that sets up his next challenger. But if he doesn't, then we can flip some shit. Because here's the thing. I need a heel hangman. I got a heel swerve. I want to see face swerve a little bit. I kind of want to see face swerve. Because here's the thing. I've seen heel swerve. Heel swerve is cool. But I want to see it. I want to see a face swerve. I want to see baby face swerve. Like I want to see what he would be like. See, we never got a heel hangman in a while. Like, I want heel, ruthless, angry, pissed off hangman. I want that hangman. I want the dude wearing the mustache and people booing the crap out of this dude. That's what I want. Like, I want him to get booed. I want him to get booed so much that it works. That even when somebody does come in, if he wins, somebody comes in, kicks the crap out of him, it's Kenny. Or somebody surprisingly. Because that's what I think it's going to be. I don't know who's going to win this one. I'm definitely looking towards a heel hangman to continue the story. Because, dude, this match is going to be fun. This is going to be a fight. This ain't going to be... It's not going to be decisive. If Joe wins clean, then, I'm, then, then I give all. And I love heel, world champion, AEW world championship, Joe. I love this. I love championship Joe. I didn't like TV champion Joe. I like world heavyweight championship Joe. The guy who comes out in the suit doesn't fight a dude, but he knows he's going to win. That's the Samoa Joe I'm looking for in TNA. The guy that I got used to seeing in TNA. That's Samoa Joe. That guy. This is the guy I want. I mean, heck, I want a little bit more out the guy. Because I do. I want a little bit more out the guy here. But if we get to see a heel hangman and a baby face swerve, brother, I, dude, I can't wait to see this match. I think that's what's going to work. But anyway, guys, these are my AW predictions. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.